Hey guys, I'm back with another video, and yes, today we have a top 10 candles, top 10 favorite candles of mine from 2023. Uh, we are approaching the end of the year, so this is when we do these type of videos. Um, so we have the stipulation with these are that they are like brand new fragrances for the year, and so the, the core 10 of those are that. But technically it's 12 candles, because I also have two other like returning fragrances that I just, I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about them in a top uh, whatever video. Um, so even though they are new, they are still technically number 11 and 12 although if I were to actually rank them like the 11 and 12 into the mix they would probably be like higher than some of the new ones uh, but like we've talked about them before but I just have to give them still some screen time so we'll talk about those first and then get into the top 10 of the my favorite fragrances um, leave a comment down below to see if you can guess what my top number one favorite uh, candle was and you'll get some fun internet stars uh, as a reply so yeah uh, let's get right into it so oh my god yes so I have to say overall for 2023, um, I think it was a good variety. So like a lot of times we complain that there's not enough bakery now, but back in the day there was nothing but bakery at Bath and Body Works. So I just kind of have to like appreciate and go with the flow of what the trends are and what they're giving us. And there's still plenty of bakery in this lineup. Um, but there's also a little bit more like sophisticated fragrances or floral woodsy stuff that kind of delve more into like what the luxury candle market is giving us. So, you know, Bath and Body Works is great because they are so affordable. They're readily available. They still have a great uh, return policy and exchange policy. Uh, and we can get some like near luxury level fragrances for like 10 bucks uh, with st grand strong throw. You guys know you can dump like 70, 60 bucks on a single week luxury candle and get no throw from it. And then you just kind of out of luck. You just can't return it or like exchange it for anything it's just like really hard so like bath and body works just gets pooped on so much and I, I just don't understand why because they give such a great variety of both basic common bakery fragrances but they still don't smell like cheap big lots candles uh and then they also still give us like luxury uh you know market type of fragrances as well uh usually in like a fun attractive packaging um and yeah i just that's why i still st still go hard for bath and body works uh despite you know my, i have critical reviews but i have favorable reviews for them as well but we have the top 10 favorite here so yeah overall it was still a good mix of them, uh, and I still enjoyed burning the candles this year, and there was still plenty of newness to buy, so I appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, uh, without further ado, let me get into number 11 and 12, um, which are the two returning fragrances that I just like, oh my god, so amazing. Like, these are like some of my top favorite candles of all time, uh, and both of them came out this year for the lineup. I, I just couldn't believe it. So the first one we have is indeed Blueberry Pumpkin Patch. Like, what? Get out. Oh my god. So this was a test scent that came out in 2012. Freaking loved it. I got it at my like old school uh, white barn store that was like an hour, an hour and a half away from me and snatched them up and I loved it back in 2012. Came out in 2013 in like a deep blue wax uh, color as well and that went wide that year and then we just never saw it again. Although we did have similar fragrances from like Blackberry Bramble Tea, was it? Uh, was like immensely similar to it. So we, we kind of still saw it and then we had like nice deviations like was it Berry Pumpkin Strudel, which was divine and amazing too? So we had like some variations. Then Blackberry Tea Leaf also came around. Uh, so yeah, but in any case, actually Blueberry Pumpkin Patch like as itself, it, it came out this year. I just, I just simply couldn't believe it. So I snatched up two of them uh, and that's what that looks like right here. I'm sure I've already reviewed this. Um, Farm Fresh Blueberries, Ripe Pumpkin and Autumn Spice. This one just, I don't know, sometimes like a nostalgia and you get rose colored glasses, you know, looking back on things in the past and I, I thought I would like this a little bit more but it kind of turns sort of flat and sour at the mid-range point and it just doesn't quite have the oomph and the crispness that I remember the old like Slack and Co version having but once again could just be like a nostalgia bias somewhere in there that I, I can't say with 100% confidence but I just remember enjoying this and like thinking it was like stronger and juicier back in the day than the present day version that I have now but nonetheless I still really enjoyed it and I just never thought I would see this fragrance again and the fact that it came out in 2023 and like updated packaging uh love it so blueberry pumpkin patch right there it kind of smells like a spiced blueberry muffin or like a Trix cereal is how that comes off uh and then of course oh my god what Radiant Red Maple, originally in 2015. Oh my god, what what kind of hideous label? I still can't get over how absolutely hideous this is. Like, this only gets a pass because it's Radiant Red Maple. Otherwise, it's just like, what in the world were they thinking? I, I'm, and I feel bad for even ragging on designs at this point because I'm a graphic designer myself uh, of candles. 
And so I know how it feels when people attack your uh, designs and stuff, but it, it, it's just, I just, I just can't. Yeah, like from one designer to another, I know there's always like different tastes and tastes are subjective and everyone has op different opinions, but this is just hideous any way you spin it. I'm just so sorry. Uh, but Radiant Red Maple. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but in any case, here it is. Grody packaging, but amazing fragrance. It came out for that. I think it was another one of those limited candle drops or whatever. Chris Macintosh apple, smoky woods, and a hint of toasted marshmallow. Kind of burns wonky. Uh, and it has a really slow burn, which is strange because the original one was so strong and vicious. But this one just kind of nubs out and it has like these really, really thin wicks on it. But still throws great. Nonetheless, it's like an amazing marshmallow fireside sweet marshmallow smoky marshmallow action with heaps of this like super syrupy sweet caramel maple syrup action in it. Oh my god, it's divine. It's sticky and sweet. It's even like cloying at times, but you know, I just love it. It's just like radiant red maple. Uh, so of course, I had to talk about that one as well. So those were number 11 and 12. Okay, now we'll go from... 10 all the way up to number one. So one being my favorite and 10 being not as favorite as number one, obviously. Uh, so number 10, we have the perfect winner just from this candle day drop. So yeah, I really enjoy this one. Uh, this one says winter pine needles, frosted eucalyptus and an icy peppermint. I've burned this one multiple times. Just a perfect, beautiful throw when it goes to burn. Love it. Mm, yeah. This is like a sort of like a pine peppermint type of fragrance. Once again, similar to frosted alpine and winter mint and spruce. You get heaps of like this shaving cream, almost toothpaste type of peppermint, spearmint cooling action. It's very sinus clearing, uh, mixed with like a nice uh, sort of like tree fragrance in the background. And it just like really evokes a crisp, cool winter. And I love that it captures the concept of the perfect winter in this like icy scene uh, appropriately. Uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed this one. It was plenty strong and uh, awesome. So yeah, the perfect winter right there. Uh, once again, I just didn't think I would get like some, something similar to Frosted Alpine or Winter Mint and Spruce again. So I was really happy to see that. And most certainly excited that this isn't just plain old winter, which they could have easily done. So happy about that. So the perfect winter right there. That was number 10. Number nine, most of these I think I have bought all except for one, which I regret. Uh, I've bought like a second backup of, uh, and one of them I have like multiple multiples. But this one I did a repurchase, uh, and it's Happy Hanukkah right here. Uh, and that's what that looks like. This is the Sufga Niat. Uh, pillowy fried donut sweet jelly filling sprinkle with powdered sugar fragrance uh, with for the Hanukkah collection. Um, Mm, love it. It just kind of, it gets nub, nubs out and kind of gets a little bitter and grody towards the mid-range point. But I still love it. The first half is so great. It just smells like an awesome fried donut, jelly donut type of fragrance. You often get a jelly donut fragrance oil like this on the uh, vendor wax fragrance oil market. And it smells very much like this. You get the powdered sugar, that sort of like fried yeasty donut. The raspberry jam in the middle. It's very similar to wildberry jam donut, but just ever so slightly different. And it has just a great throw. Uh, and it's just super delectable and awesome and just has that like bakery fried element in there that I really enjoy. So happy Hanukkah was number nine. Um, let's see, moving on to number eight is crunchy English toffee. Ooh, I love this one too. Uh, that's what that looks like. Sweet brown sugar, crunchy toffee and a dash of vanilla extract. Um, I wish this one was a little bit stronger, but I'm not complaining. I still love it. I did indeed buy a second one of this one as well. Mm, this is kind of like similar to butterscotch toffee, but also that salted chocolate caramel thing we had before, as well as chocolate chip cookies. It's like this brown sugar infused like caramel fragrance, so more like toffee. Uh, and then that brown sugar just gives it like this deep rich richness that kind of comes off smelling like cookies or something baking. Uh, and there's almost like a chocolatey feel in there. And it's just this awesome, like, kind of smells like that salted chocolate caramel fragrance or butterscotch toffee or chocolate chip cookies. And I love, like, all those variations. And this is just, like, so juicy and awesome. And I was expecting something that was just going to be, like, a generic toffee or a salty caramel fragrance. But it wasn't because it has that addition of that extra robust dark brown sugar, that molasses -y feel, and then a little bit of, like, this chocolatey feel in there as well. That it smells like some kind of, like, chocolate caramel candy bar. So really enjoyed that one. So crunchy English toffee right there. Number seven. Oh my gosh, this one I snagged an extra one at Candle Day because I was just like, ooh, there's something about this one that's really juicy. Uh, and it's Wildberry and Ube right there. Love it. Um, fresh Wildberries, Purple Ube and Creamy Vanilla. Uh, this one's super sooty, but it's plenty strong and I can smell it no problem. Mmm, yeah, this just smells like a taro milk tea. Ube is supposed to be like a Filipino, um, Philippines purple yam thing or whatever, but it's 
more sweet than taro or something like that. I don't remember, but it just smells like a taro milk tea. There's like a starchiness from the taro or the ube potato wheat action that I really enjoy. Uh, there's like a brown sugarness that evokes brown sugar boba. And there's like a milky creaminess mixed with like just enough sweetness from that sort of wild berry note uh, just to give it like this awesome like milk tea fragrance. I've always wanted a taro milk tea fragrance. So I'm like super stoked for this. So wild berry and ube right there. Love it. Uh, very similar to your wild berry jam donuts um, and your like PB&J ice cream, those type of fragrances. Moving on, this one totally surprised me. I was not expecting to like this one, but I did also indeed snag a second one of this one. Uh, I finished my first one just a few days ago and we have the second one now and that is Midnight Cocktails. Oh my God, I really enjoy this one. Super, just super out of left field for me. I'm not really into these type of fragrances normally. Uh, enter a hidden world with innovative libations and every patron's hand is a soft scent of tobacco lingers in the air. Cedarwood, clove, and tobacco. I, I don't even really know how to explain this fragrance. I guess it has that sort of like slightly shaving cream tobacco flower type of like floral tobacco action in there mixed with a spiciness and a woodsiness. But then there's also like a sort of like a perfumey body care aspect in there as well. There's just like a very much old world midnight cocktails, like some kind of like lounge type of speakeasy feel to it that I really enjoy. There's just something that smells very like antique or like atmospheric about it. I could just imagine myself in like a beautiful like 1920s art deco bar in New York City with like lounge chairs that are leather with like a roaring fireplace and just like beautiful antique decorations and cozy atmosphere action um, and having this burning in there and I don't enjoy bars I don't drink I don't smoke or anything like that so it's not anything that I would actually like do but I guess it's the the fantasy experience of being transported to a location as such uh, without actually having to go there because I don't have any desire to go to a place like that but I guess I would enjoy the atmosphere if that makes sense like I can uh, observe it as a third party like fly on the wall type of thing but not necessarily be in there having to deal with the loud music and the noise and all that kind of stuff if that makes sense uh but in any case midnight cocktails yeah there's just something so like moody and atmospheric about this i just love burning this at night like when i'm winding down and put on some like uh midnight mood playlist from apple music which is like this like sort of jazzy uh <laughs> feel to it love it so midnight cocktails right there uh plenty strong as well uh, okay, moving on to the top five now. Number five is Praline Delight. Oh my god, I love this. This one I also, this is the second one that I have. The first one's almost done. Um, roasted pecans, brown sugar, and creamy caramel. Uh, I actually really enjoy these labels. A lot of people were ragging on it, but I just love how like juicy and graphical it is against the wax color I, and like the bold font on there. I just, I loved everything about this whole Wonderfall floor set. Uh, snatched. Mmm, this is so scrumptious and delicious. Freaking love it. It's like has this like sort of like custardy cheesecake crumbly action uh, chilling in the background that's similar to the equivalent part of pumpkin spice cheesecake. But then there's like this like nutty sort of like Texas pecan pie, pumpkin pecan waffles, uh, that type of like uh, sugary pecan caramel creamy action in there. And it's just delicious. It could be some kind of like praline caramel cheesecake type of fragrance is what I most uh, imagine when I smell this. And like Praline Delight just has kind of a jank name to it. I wish this was like named something a little bit more appealing, but I don't care because it still smells so good. And it's just like when you have it burning, there's just like something super scrumptious and delicious and like sweet just like burning in the background and like wafting into the air. And it smells like you have some kind of like pecan-y cheesecake caramel action going on in the background. Oh my God, it's just absolutely delicious. Loved it. It was plenty strong too. So Praline Delight right there. This one I was afraid it would like nub out because that's a dark brown wax, but this stayed high and uh, crazy the whole time, so love it. Uh, number four, oh my god, I love this one too. Honestly, this one in Praline Delight I think can be like interchanged in terms of the the order it's in, but whatever. Uh, cozy Sunday Night right here, yes. Was this like the one new one from this like collection? Uh, warm cinnamon, crystallized ginger, and vanilla bean. I did buy another one of this one as well, and I have like maybe half done of the first one. Mmm, so juicy and awesome. There's just like this super spicy like cinnamon tea fragrance, and it's like sweetened by that vanilla bean. Uh, and the ginger also gives it like a ginger tea, like a gingerbread tea type of fragrance in there as well. I feel like it's a more sophisticated, nicer version of Cuddle Weather, which... Uh, came out last year, but also came out again just for candle day, but I think I prefer this one It's just like a juicier version in my eyes of cozy Sunday night. Mmm. Yeah, I love it Like a cinnamon ginger tea with like a cozy vanilla 
uh, sort of bakery action chilling in the background to make it a little bit sweeter. Love it. Cozy Sunday night right there. And plenty strong, scrumptious, just great during the fall time. Uh, number three, this is the only one I didn't buy a backup of. Oh my god, and this one had a hand soap, which I did get two hand soaps of this one because I really enjoyed it. Uh, this one, if I can find it during essay, I was hoping I would find it during candle day because my local store said they boxed up a ton of them, but then I guess they just didn't bring it out for candle day or I missed it. So I'm hoping I'll at least score one during SAS. And it is Rose and Lychee. I think I initially, this is one of those I changed my mind on. So if you want to call me out on Reddit and say that, you know, I changed my mind, I'm unreliable or whatever, uh, more power to you. I hope you feel great about calling other people out for their human qualities. Uh, but Rose Lychee right here, yeah. I think the original review, I was just like, oh, it's just like fruity and lychee. It didn't have enough rose in it. And like, I'm such a huge rose fan that when I see the word rose in it, especially as the leading name on it, I want heaps of rose. So when I smell this, there's a little bit of a prettiness in there, but I feel like the lychee fruitiness was so much stronger than the rose part, so I was disappointed in that. But then when I overcame that and was like, okay, let me just enjoy it for the fragrance, and I started using the hand soap, uh, I loved the smell of it, and it was great. Uh, and it was, it's super strong, it's super sooty too, but it's just like this pretty, like a prettier version of a lychee fragrance, and I liked how like exotic and different it was, and it's like a fruity fragrance, but in a more, uh, just a different exotic take of it rather than their usual, like, run-of-the-mill tropical fragrance. So this is Wild Rose, Sugar Lychee, and Delicate Raspberries. Mmm, oh my god, yeah, so juicy. It just kind of smells like those lychee gummies that you get from the Oriental store, but there's just a hint of this, like, sort of powdery, rosy action in there that's delicious. Yeah, oh my god, I so hope, I tried buying this one, like, maybe a, two months ago. It, there was one willy-nilly on the floor, and it was all the candles were on sale and the sales associate was adamant that she just could not price override this and sell it for me even though it's out on the floor with all candles on sale she's like yeah we're supposed to box them all up so i just can't sell it to you i was so aggravated it's like girl it's out on the floor there's a sign that says all three week candles on sale just like sell it to me but whatever not my favorite sales associate but we'll get over it she's just doing her job so <laughs> rose leach right here i uh, love it uh, number two, Seesaw and Neroli. Oh my god, I love this one too. Uh, and that's what that looks like. Did these technically come out maybe last year though? You know how a lot of times these spring ones come out early towards the end of December? Um, it has a poor date from 2022, so yeah, potentially so. But Seesaw and Neroli, amazing, excellent, uh, super strong and super sooty. Oh my god. Oh, this is so good. Uh, salt and neroli blossoms, watery eucalyptus, and fresh lemon zest. I don't know if this one's going to ever come back out again, but I sure loved it. Yeah, this is like your most beautiful, beachy, orange blossom. It has like a sort of sandly, nuzzly quality to it with just a little bit of this extra like lemon zest to just give it a punch to it. But it has a beautiful, most realistic orange blossom floral quality to it from that neroli. Oh my god, it's just so beautiful. It's like that sophisticated like in the sun, uh, sort of sunscreen leaning solar floral quality to it that you find in a lot of like higher end luxury orange blossom fragrances tend to smell like this. There was that Zara Jo Malone orange blossom fragrance uh, that smells very much like this. And I really like that fragrance, but it was a single wick that didn't perform very well. So to have a three wick that's super strong for like 12 bucks at BBW, I most certainly bought another one of this. Love it. Excellent. It's just like the most like luxurious, like beachy, sunny quality without it being your obvious tropical pineapple coconut fruit BS that we get all the time. So, oh my God, love it. Sea salt and Neroli right there. Probably their best orange blossom fragrance to date for sure. Yeah, just simply excellent. And lastly, oh my god, PB&J ice cream. Yes, I think I was mixed opinions on this originally as well. This was during that ice cream drop. Um, and it reads raspberry jelly, vanilla ice cream, and peanut butter sauce. Yeah, I think I was just like, oh, I'm just kind of fine with the one or two, and I could actually exchange my online order, and I don't need it, but then I ended up keeping it, uh, and then the more I burned it, I realized I really enjoyed it, and so I think I was trying to, it was during my manifestation phase during this year. If you guys remember, I kept, like, talking about, like, manifesting things. The the one, the other thing that I really wanna, wanted to manifest in my life still has not manifested, but I'm still trying, <laughs> but in any case, I was like, I just want to manifest some PB&J ice cream candles, and I think I went into the store and I found like two or three of them and I was like girl snatch them all up so I think I bought like maybe five of these four or five of these I really enjoy this one there is something about their like weird PB and J blends that I just like go crazy for oh my god yeah so 
you get the nuttiness of sort of that PB and J fragrance, but without the weird like mahogany apple cologne weirdness that we got from the original PB J PB and J, but a similar like sort of slightly nutty peanut butter spread type of feel to it, mixed with the awesome like wild berry jam donut brown sugar plus wild berry like sort of crumbly bakery action in there, and oh my god, it's just so delicious. I just freaking love it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, I love the PB&J fragrances and this I just really went hard for. Um, I think it was like medium to medium plus and it totally burned fine. I just, I just remember always like burning this one when it came out. So I was so excited to find a few more later on. So PB&J ice cream right there. So that was number one on my list. So yes, super fun to go through all of these. Yeah, I still think BBW does a great job of giving us variety, cute packaging, uh, just a lot of collections, a mix of newness and returning to appeal to, you know, casuals as well as us hardcore candle community people and a nice uh, variety of both bakery and non-bakery fragrances. So yeah, I think it was still a pretty good year in terms of buying and getting excited about stuff. There's just enough newness spr sprinkled in. And I think they actually do a better job of newness than some of their darker days that they, we've had in past years. Yeah, I think we get more newness now than... There was There was a while there where there was a dry spell and it was just like repackaged after repackaged and hardly anything new. So I think they're doing a good job of balancing all of it. So yeah, uh, and that was pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your top 10 favorite candles or top how many ever you have down below or just your favorite. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a least favorite just because I just tend to not buy ones that I don't like anymore. Like back in the day, I used to just, I guess, be a glutton for punishment and enjoyed reviewing candles that I hated, but it just seems kind of pointless at this time. So I don't quite buy candles that I think are nasty on cold that much anymore as I used to that I don't know if I'll even have enough candles to talk about in a worst video, but we'll see. And if you have any worst ones that you also hated, leave that all in the comments down below and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.